William Gibson once said, the future is already here. It is just not evenly distributed. This future can be seen in the technology around us. And this technology has enabled many people with disabilities to move beyond their physical limitations and to access not just physical spaces, but to access education, career opportunities, and independence. It was not many decades ago someone like myself would be institutionalized with no opportunity for employment. It was not long ago we didn't have smartphones that could read someone who has a visual impairment a document or walking directions or voice to text which allows me to type as fast as I can speak despite not having the use of my fingers. Or rideshare services like Uber and Lyft which allow me to get a ride anywhere at any time. Well, this last one is not entirely true because unfortunately Uber and Lyft have thus far evaded the need for um, serving everyone equally by simply not having wheelchair accessible vans. But this is not an isolated situation. For the disability community, this is more the norm rather than an exception. With a with many of the disability community being either fixed or low income and having specific disability related needs, it's a really small market share. So companies have little incentive to develop products to develop or to meet these needs. And universal design, though a wonderful kind of utopian dream to work towards, will inevitably not meet all the needs of everyone. Don't get me wrong, technology is amazing, and if it wasn't for that, I certainly would not be sitting here today, nor would I be a lecturer at UC Berkeley after finishing my bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering, along with Chris. Um, but that's not what I want to tell you about today. I want to tell you about my story and how technology has enabled so much in my life and how it has also enabled me to help many folks in their lives and on their road towards independence. I had never really wanted to go to college, and when I was 19, I was working on cars. I had worked as in an outdoor education program, and I was planning on getting my um, license for heavy equipment operation. But that all changed on July 6, 2006, when on my way home from a friend's barbecue, I decided to dive into the river and hit my head on the bottom, breaking my neck and becoming paralyzed. I was by myself at night, but thankfully there was a woman taking her kids and a dog for a walk and were upstream, and she dove in after me, pulling me out, and did CPR. After two surgeries to stabilize my neck, several months of hospitalization, and three years of heavy physical rehabilitation, I still couldn't move my fingers triceps or feel anything below my chest. I had been taking a few community college classes here and there, and as I saw my physical rehabilitation plateau, I decided I would focus more on school and more on my classes in hopes to actually get a good job so I wouldn't be dependent on social security for the rest of my life. Mechanical engineering seemed like a natural option I'd liked working on cars, but it also would enable me to continue working towards my independence. Where my body fell short, I could use my brain to develop products or to develop devices to limit the barriers that my disability had caused. It had become really clear very quickly that such devices weren't being developed, so I set out to make my own like so many other people with disabilities have done just out of necessity. I had always liked building things, so I started making tools so I could you know, unscrew or solder with essentially my mouth or my hands because I still can't use my fingers. I would also look on do-it-yourself sites like Instructables or Hackaday and see, for example, 25 chicken door openers that had been automated but not one for someone with a disability in their residence. And so that became my first project is making a Bluetooth door opener because the technology is not that different. It's just a little bit more emphasis on security, I suppose. 
Um, through that experience and many other experiences of developing such devices, I've seen that there's such a technical wealth on these online communities that if we just got a few people here and there to work on a weekend project, we could build an incredible library of these kind of solutions that people could either build at home on their own, have somebody help build them, and maybe you know, the most successful projects could be developed into products uh, to be even more available for the disability community. At UC Berkeley, myself, Francisco Peralta, and Kevin Hanninger set out to kind of engage more students in working on such projects. We founded a community, or a student organization that brought students together of all majors with community members with disabilities to work on specific challenges that they faced on a daily basis and wanted to kind of work at finding some kind of solution. Um, we've, I guess we started in 2014 and have worked on dozens of projects, but we've also hosted makeathons to kickstart such projects with a 48 hour making session and um, we're on our second year of having a student run course where uh, it's all kind of student taught and we cover everything that we found students really needed to have successful projects. And that's not just the technical skills, but also disability rights, advocacy, uh, human-centered design, and interviewing skills. Um, we found really the most successful projects were those where the students um, developed strong friendships with the community members and where everyone really felt like they had a voice in the design process. Um, And I guess finally now, um, we're working on moving off campus and have created a nonprofit, abilityhacks.org, trying to kind of move what pe people's abilities they do have and like how we can augment them. And we're working to continue building this kind of awareness and effort towards meeting people's needs with disabilities through technology. Um, so. Help me in spreading this future widely and evenly by making your own you know, projects, by documenting them well, putting them online so other people can learn from them, or maybe opening up a space to have a class or a meetup or joining an organization that already exists. Because if we all share kind of our communal knowledge and work together, there's no reason why so many of these challenges faced by people with disabilities can't be a thing of the past. It's really not the disability that limits us, nor the lack of technology, but more the lack of creativity applying one to the other. So join me, thank you.